Hello awesome people, I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at the short story called The Power of Darkness. It was published by Edith Nisbet more than 100 years ago. Um, our copy of it is in this collection that was published a few years ago uh, and edited by S.T. Joshi. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's the next short story in this collection. Uh, I also checked it and it's online and available for free too in case you want to read it. It took me about 27 minutes last night for me to knock it out for the first time and I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, so this is one of the longer ones in the collection uh but it's still um, but it's still a lot of fun and we've been doing a deep dive into the edith nesbitt horror stuff for you folks so let's take a look at this short story and what i thought about it so this is probably like a 7.5 out of 10 um as a reminder my reviews are spoiler free but the quick little synopsis of what's happening in the 14 pages uh is is that we have two ca major characters that are 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 our key po characters our point of view character uh, is a lesser, is, is, is not as nice of a person uh, to the other person who's much nicer. And uh, we find out, and they're both in uh, abroad, and they both are in a, in a larger city uh, with a lot of, of uh, things that are happening, night times and so forth, uh, and they're in France. And uh, they have, uh, and then the the one who's not our point of view character, but the other major character in the plot line has a fear of darkness from when he was a kid. Uh, and our point of view character will make fun of him a few times. He'll accompany him back home for some stuff. Uh, and then he'll offer to take him to a local uh, waxworks uh, museum. Uh, so they will go to the waxworks museum together, uh, which has some dark and nasty things uh, that happen. And then the Waxworks Museum is going to be our key sort of place where all the dark, horror things are going to happen. Uh, and then that's it. That's the short story. Uh, after about three pages into it, uh, they will agree and, and watch, walking around and so forth. Uh, he will, they will agree uh, to stay the night. Um, our 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 primary antagonist, who is uh, who is not the key point of view character, uh, but the other one, uh, will be the one who stays uh, the night. So we'll find out about four or five pages in, uh, into the fifteen pages short story that that's going to wind up happening. They have a, a bet and a challenge, uh, and uh, he'll be able to stay the night even though he's got a fear of the darkness. That the guy, our our other main character makes fun of. Uh, so there you are. That's the setup, and that's then you'll find out what happens in the last ten pages, and it's a lot of fun. Um, it didn't go into any weird, crazy places, but it definitely was fast, and I, I enjoyed it, uh, and I was gripped the entire time. So, I'm, again, I'm giving this a 7.5 out of 10 for you folks. Uh, there's my review. As a reminder, uh, Edith Nesbitt was a major character in the pulp era and was writing more than 100 years ago, so her stuff has passed its copyright date. Um, she wrote more than 60 novels, most of which were children's uh, and fantasy. Uh, we picked up one recently, and I read it for you folks, and I liked it. I'm glad I read it, but it didn't sell me uh, as the sort of a launch line for a bunch of her new stuff moving forward. Um, I read some of her horror stuff for you previously. Um, I, I read a horror short story of hers called Man Size in Marble, uh, which was uh, republished in, in, a, in a collection of five horror short stories that I got one for Christmas as, as a used collection from one of my relatives that I knocked out really quickly. Uh, and then I reread that collection of the four short stories that I had not reviewed for you already um, recently. I also knocked out a couple of her short stories and a couple of collections pretty recently too that I did a deep dives into. Um, and then I went back um, and I've already reviewed a, a short story by John Carrington's Wedding um, about a year and a half ago or so uh, that I knocked out from a, from a collection called 100 Ghost Stories. Uh, so she's definitely somebody who wrote a lot of horror stuff and had a lot of collections of horror uh, collections that were published from the dead uh, that we've been doing a deep dive into collects her horror stuff and as a reminder it's edited by st Joshi, who was a big name in the uh, horror collection field for example he's done a lot of collections and written a lot of things uh and, and i've written things people like hp lovecraft and so forth uh and is and, and is a big name as a horror editor He's also edited uh, some horror collections of for Penguin Classics too, uh, just as an FYI. So he's he's a key editor uh, in the field. That's definitely that a lot of horror fans will follow. So having a, 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 so doing a deep dive into Edith Nesbitt uh, and reading a lot of her things is a lot of fun. Now her stuff tends not to be sort of the gothic style or the cosmic horror style of Lovecraft. 
there are the occasional gothic story science cards in here uh, but it tends to be more just sort of uh lower down sort of you know the sort of horror that you might read in in modern stuff um so it's but it's a lot of fun i definitely enjoy your stuff so far uh and uh, so so you'll check out check out the power of darkness and see what you think and, and if you have you read it if so What'd you think? Did you agree or disagree with my 7.5? Would you like to talk about the spoilers or the ending in the comments? Let's do so. If, if you enjoyed this, let's subscribe to this channel. After all, you might as well. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I want to thank you, uh, you know, for taking some time out of your day and investing it in watching this. You know, we all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.